Hey everybody, Paul Turner here from the discipleproject.net. Excited to bring you a lesson today, something I'm doing with my group based on the song by David Crowder called Praise the Lord. But before we get into that today, I want to announce that tomorrow night, Thursday, March the 23rd at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, I'm going to get on and do a live stream. In fact, I believe it's going to be one of my first live streams here on YouTube, and I want to invite you to come out. Uh, you may have watched my last video. There'll be a link up here somewhere uh, to double your youth group in one year, which is was a bit tongue-in-cheek uh, as far as how to do that. I was trying to get a point across, uh, but I would really love to give you some tips, and if you are interested in growing your youth ministry, I would love to help you with that. Now, all you have to do is if you want to get your questions in ahead of time, you can hit me up anywhere. You can send me an email at thedprojectatme.com. You can leave a question down here below. You can hit me on Twitter at Paul Turner 2 all these various ways, Facebook, all those kind of places. Uh, you can hit me up and ask your questions in advance, and I would love for you to do so. All right, so let's get into today's lesson, which I am calling The God Beyond. The God Beyond. Now, let's take a look at David Crowder's lyrics first. In the very first lines, he says, I used to shake you like an eight ball. I used to shoot you like a gun. I used to hold you like a hammer, try to nail down everyone. I used to keep you in a steeple, used to bind you in a book. I used to take you like prescription without knowing what I took. Now, this here builds the uh, foundation of what we're going to do for our lesson today. So let's get started. So the first line is, I used to shake you like an eight ball. Well, I went to the store today and uh, got myself the lucky eight ball here. Let's see. Will this video be successful? <laughs> it, won't, it won't answer me. It doesn't know. It says, hazy, try again later. Well, you can see there, uh, this is not a very good indicator of how my video is going to do, but it's also not a good indicator of how God answers us. Uh, and I understand where David Crowder's come from. So when you listen to this song, uh, you know, David Crowder's been in this for a very long time. And sometimes we tend to just shake God like an eight ball. We just want answers. We just want answers. Tell me, God, you know what? Just tell me. I want to know. And in reality, what we're trying to say is, listen, through all these things, our image of God, God is so beyond our imagination. That like God is beyond what we can even teach you in that regard. We can only go to scripture and tell you who he is, but even then our own imaginations are uh, blown away by really, in reality, uh, who God is. So the next thing is that I used to take you like a gun and shoot everyone. Now, sometimes we use God as a weapon, right? We use God as something to hurt other people with, uh, to tell people that they're no good uh, because God doesn't love them, God doesn't care about them, uh, or uh, you're too bad, uh, God's gonna just uh, devastate you, God's gonna judge you, God's gonna condemn you, all these things. And sadly, we use God not only as our eight ball to get quick answers, but we use God like a gun and just shoot everybody down. Uh, anybody that doesn't agree with us, anybody that doesn't uh, uh, like us, uh, we tend to use a weapon to uh, tear them down, and we use God as a weapon to do that. The third thing we say is that God is like a hammer, right? Nailing down everyone, that this kind of represents the Pharisee in all of us, right? That wants to try to nail people down. It says, uh, look, you're doing that wrong. You're living the Christian life wrong. You shouldn't be listening to that music. And we're trying to, you know, nail people down and say, look, you know, you know, we're going to get you. <laughs> it says, I'm going to get you mentality and I'm going to keep you in line. And I'm going to use God as a big hammer that says, this is what you're supposed to be doing. And you're supposed to be doing this and not supposed to be doing that. So God is often looked at as a hammer. Now, the next two, uh, you're going to have to look at your own theology, your own church's theology, things like this, and how you describe these next two. But it says, I used to keep you in a steeple, right? Uh, I used to keep you in the church. And we say, well, is God bigger than the church? Well, there's two, lots of viewpoints on that, right? Uh, I tend to favor uh, the idea that where we go, we're the church, we're the kingdom of God, the building's not, uh, that wherever we go, God goes with us. And so in that regard, God is certainly bigger than the building, right? God is bigger than the building. And that, uh, and that God, when God's church goes out, he goes with us. And so I, you know, we tend to keep God, and this is true of all churches, right? There's some dogma that maybe go in there that God is only as big as the man in the front of the church tells us he is. And we have no greater imagination other than, you know, what the guy at the front of the church says. And so we try to break that down for kids and say, look, God is much bigger than what I tell you. It's bigger than uh, uh, any 
pet doctrine I may have, but God is certainly bigger than the building, and God is certainly bigger than the guy at the front of the church. The next example that he uses, a, I used to keep God in a book, and I think that you know he's referring to the Bible. And of course, you have to ask yourself, is God bigger than the Bible, right? Big questions, right? Uh, I tend to think in favor that God, yes, God is bigger in scope, He's bigger in our imaginations. He's bigger than all those things. But we always have to go back to Scripture to see and reference who God is. We have to have some point of reference to describe who God is because our own minds and our own conscience and our own stuff that we try to make up about God may not match what's already been said about him. And we want to have kind of a match there between uh, the revelation that the Holy Spirit has brought and, uh, and what we are even proposing to try to imagine God is. Rather than make up our own illustration, our own ideas of who God is, we already have a pretty good picture of who he is from this book. And finally, we look at God as a prescription, right? We take uh, these pills, these God pills every day, and they may be devotions, and they may be prayer time, and they may be a whole bunch of things. And we just pop them like a pill. And we think, well, I'm going to get my Jesus pill. And then, man, I'm going to be strong and all these things. And, uh, you know, and that's not what it's about. It's not about popping your daily religious pills to be more Jesus-like. Ephesians 1.17 tells us, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. And that really, that's the goal. And that's not what a, a pill can't do that. A pill can't, uh, you know, get us closer. If we're trying to keep, do the pills just so we can keep up, right? We're trying to keep up our religious uh, practices. We're trying to do those things. Well, a pill can't uh, do relationship for us. A pill uh, can't give us supernatural uh, sustaining power in the Holy Spirit. And when we get to know the God, the Father, better, we see him more than an eight ball. We see him more than a gun. We see him more than a hammer, more than uh, uh, the building, and more than a book. And so when we do that, that, that gives kids a reference there to dream and to imagine this God of the scriptures that they so desperately want to know that it's all about the relationship with God that we have. And that sometimes we get bogged down, adults and everybody else get bogged down in, in who they believe the God to be and how they try to use God in their life versus being used by God and just getting to know God on a super personal level. So, but that is it, guys. That's my lesson for today. If you want something like I'm going to be doing this, so I have scriptures and I have quotes and I have things like that. If you're interested in the lesson at all, you can always sign up for the Fresh Impact newsletter. Uh, they'll be down here where you can get to there and also in the description down below. And I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me today. If you're brand spanking new, thanks for chilling with me for a little while. Hope that you enjoyed this little lesson. You might be able to use it with your youth ministry. Uh, if you're a regular, thank you so much uh, for hanging out hanging out. Be sure to hit the thumbs up button. Let's know you like the video and you want more of them. And don't forget the live stream tomorrow, Thursday, the 23rd of March. It'll be 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. I hope that you'll get there. Leave your questions down below uh, uh, about growing your youth ministry, things like that. We'll talk about tactics. We'll talk about strategy and things like that. And I hope that you'll be able to join me. So, all right. So until tomorrow, guys, I'll catch you guys later. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.